What, in your view, is the growth potential of asset management in the kingdom? Well, the asset management industry in Saudi Arabia has been continuously improving and evolving, especially in the last 10 years. I mean, and particularly since the inception of the CMA. Mm -hmm. um, the CMA has done truly a great job when it comes to, I mean, uh, improving the regulatory environment and promoting transparencies and even encouraging asset managers to, do, to be more, more innovative when it comes to product development. But if we want to assess the situation today, we have to look at some numbers. I mean, uh, today we are managing around 700 to 800 billion real worth of assets. Out of this 700 or 800 billion reals, if we look at the number, it's actually equivalent to almost 20% of our annual GDP. So is that percentage high or low or optimum? We have to compare this to some international examples. I mean, let's take the U.S. for instance. In the U.S., they manages, their, asset under, their asset management industry manages more than $50 trillion worth of assets. That's actually equivalent to two times their annual GDP. If we look at Europe, their asset management industry manages assets worth around 1.5 times their GDP. So this shows that there is a high potential to grow the asset management industry. I mean, let us go a bit deeper and talk about mutual fund or look at the mutual fund business because when we talk about mutual fund, it is the business within the asset management industry. Based on IMF report, the asset management that pertains to mutual funds in the U.S., it's equivalent to around 148% of their GDP. In U.K., it is 73%. So if we look at the situation in Saudi, it is less than 5%. Actually, 20% of the market cap of listed equities in the U.S. market owned by mutual funds, while in Saudi, it is less than 3%. So here we have to ask ourselves a question. Is there any major source of funding that we miss and they have captured? The answer is yes. I mean, around 47%, 47% of the source of funding that get channeled through the ecosystem of the mutual fund business in the US comes from retirement, pension, saving plans and schemes. So, and if we look at the situation of the saving and retirement schemes in the kingdom, we have a very low penetration. True. So, I mean, to sum up this, this has really put huge responsibility on us as regulators, market participants, fund managers, to assess the private and semi-private sector to develop a retirement and saving scheme for the people. A, because this is in line with Vision 2030, that encourage the awareness of the importance of saving plans, B, the expected amount of funding that could be generated from those schemes could be material enough to push the asset management to the next level and to be perceived as a sector that is a major contributor to our economical growth. How can the industry expand the suite of offerings to the Saudi community? Well, if there is any asset class or a range of products that has to be expanded, it's actually fixed income. And before, before I tell you why fixed income, let's, let's, look, let's, let's review the allocation today. I mean, out of the 700 or 800 billion real asset under management within our industry, 18% of that has been allocated to fixed income. But if we look and, and, and review the portfolio of the top 500 asset managers in the world, 40% of their portfolio has been allocated to fixed income. If we refer back to Vision 2030, one of the uh, ambitious uh, uh, plans of the vision is that there are certain sectors will face a massive growth like transportation, aviation, infrastructure, real estate, etc. Those sectors require financing. And therefore, I believe that asset management industry has now to play its role by being a major alternative financing option for those sectors. Let me give you, let me give you some examples. Please. I mean, uh, let's take the leasing funds, for instance. Leasing fund is a mean of financing. 
So the more we develop leasing funds in the market that can be addressed and directed to those sectors like the aviation, transportation, real estate, etc., and the infrastructure, the more those sectors they can grow and they can perceive the asset management industry as an industry of choice when it comes to uh, financing options. Trade finance, for instance, if we were to have a strong logistics and manufacturing sector, then without having financing companies that can meet the requirement of the traders, exporters, and importers, and they can be able to offload their credit portfolio to trade finance funds, we won't be able to have that really sufficient uh, uh, manufacturing and logistics uh, sector. So, to sum up, this will, will definitely uh, put the asset management at the radar when it comes to financing. Number two, the expected maintainable return out of the fixed income products will meet the requirement of those investors who are looking to develop sufficient investment plan for the future. So this is, again, it's in line with our ambitious economical plan. On the other hand, the ETFs. ETFs is very important, and it's growing in a very fast mood in the, coming, in the last 10 years. I mean, if we looked at ETF, the ETF, it grew from $1 trillion to $7 trillion. And there is a high correlation between ETFs and robo-advisory. The more, the more robo-advisory works more perfectly when we have a very well diverse range of product when it comes to ETFs and passively managed funds. So therefore, if we think that this market has a technology advancement and it's, we are incubating the technology transformation and we think the demand of robo-advisor will be massive in the future, then to have this as a successful record, we have to have a very well diverse range of ETF products in the future. May I please have your views on, on ESG? Yeah. Uh, when it comes to ESG, mm -hmm. I mean, the issue that there is no clear, well-defined criteria and standards about the ESG. But let me put it within this, the following context. Mm -hmm. I mean, ESG for asset management, it actually represents a regulatory, uh, sorry, a social and, and environmental and regulatory consideration, considerations in the investment process. And the more institutional investors in the future they will incubate and embrace ESG standards, the more they will demand from asset managers to comply also with ESG, otherwise they won't really invest with them. But you know, in this part of the world, and particularly in Saudi Arabia, we have a major part of our asset management industry have been complying with a system that I believe is more comprehensive than even the standards of ESG, which is Sharia compliant. I believe that Sharia compliant does not contradict with ESG, yet it has a border values. The issue with us, we have limited the scope of Sharia to be within the transaction structures. But I think if you look at ESG and Sharia together, both they promote transparency and accountability, both they promote to have a socially responsible financial system. And therefore, given the history of Saudi Arabia when it comes to Islamic finance, I believe that ESG and Sharia, they are ready for convergence, and our market could be the hotspot to, uh, to ensure that convergence will take place. Because if you look at the ESG asset under management, the expectation based on Bloomberg report, report it might reach a $53 trillion in 2025. So if ESG, if Saudi Arabia being perceived as the market for the convergence between ESG and Sharia, we can definitely uh, capture a very large piece of the ESG asset management pie. This mm -hmm. is my view. Yeah, both ESG and Sharia compliant investing have been significant growth areas. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Gentlemen, before we adjourn, we would be amiss if we don't touch on the role of technology in, in, in mm -hmm. our industry. But please, briefly. Well, you thank could. you, Tim, for this question. I mean, um, <clears throat> the most noticeable disruptions mm -hmm. to the financial sector happened in 1982, when Bloomberg Terminal were introduced to the market at that time. Mm -hmm. It actually changed the way asset managers and traders access the market data until it become a cornerstone for every single trading disk around the world. Today, we are at the border of another market disruptions, which is AI. I mean, AI will change even the behavior and the way asset managers will do the, their job. For example, in stock picking, and AI algorithms will even support asset managers to generate more efficient alpha. If we look at the machine learning, 
the machine learning within AI empowerment, it actually will support asset managers to correlate, to, to search for the correlation between world events and the impact on asset prices. So this is a massive improvement in, in, in the job of asset managers in the future. AI definitely will eliminate biases from investment process. It will give asset managers sort of indications about market trends, and it will empower even the, uh, the, the, uh, the operation back office. Mm -hmm. It also will put the asset managers at the level where they can better utilize the robo-advisory features. So if we look at AI today, it will be very important in the future because the more institutional investors realize the fact that AI is highly correlated with the performance of asset managers, they will always demand from their asset managers to empower the AI, to empower their technology transportation with AI to be part of their features. Otherwise, they won't invest with them. So if we think that Saudi Arabia, again, it's really embracing the technology transformation, and we are, and we are at a very high technology advancement level around uh, for, compared to the rest of the world. Then we in this industry has the obligation to really improve and empower our technology transformation with AI features, machine learning, and all these, you know, uh, powerful tools to to perform better and to generate alpha and to make our business much easier than before.